Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about best practices for importing audio, video, and imagery into the Blender program. So let's get started by looking at what the current supported video, audio, and image types are for Blender. And the best way to see what is currently supported is to simply go up to the help menu and click on the manual. And this will take you to the manual for the version of Blender that you are currently using. And if what you are seeing is anything like what I'm seeing, you will have a left sidebar and you will be able to go over to Files and Data System. And in here, you can go to Media Formats. And here, they have supported graphics formats and supported video formats. Let's start by clicking on the supported graphics formats. And you can see these are the major formats that are supported and all the limitations of them. You'll notice that GIF or GIF as the kids say nowadays uh, is not supported by Blender. Initially I think it wasn't supported because of a license issue and now I think it's just that nobody has any real interest in implementing the feature. Let's go back and we'll go over to the supported video formats and you can see here that FFmpeg is the transcorder that is used for doing all of our video rendering. The addition in Blender 2.8 was of the WebM uh, container and the WebM VP9 video codec and the Opus audio codec, which are newer uh, containers and codecs um, that I think they have uh, better compression and I think they're H.265. Uh, we, we are still going to focus on doing H.264 video uh, with AAC audio. Um, but you have the option now if you like to use a more modern codec. So that's, uh, all, that's all the information on um, the, the containers, the formats, and the codecs that are supported by Blender. You can always get the updated listing on this manual page. Let's go back over to Blender. Now, what I want to show you guys is something that I often <laughs> encounter in the comments when people are telling me that they can't keep their audio and their video in sync. Now, it's very important that when we are importing source video into the Blender program that we use constant frame rate video. Now, you'll notice that over on the, uh, in the render properties area over here, uh, if you drop down, you can see what the standard constant frame rates are that Blender likes to see. So we're aiming at frame rates that are listed here. Now, I'm going to bring in a variable frame rate video that I recorded on my smartphone uh, a year or two ago. And I'm going to show you what happens when we drag and drop that in. So I'm going to click on the center of this variable frame rate video, drag it, and I'm going to drop it over the sequencer. And what happened was it split out the video strip, which is this blue strip, and the audio strip, which is this green strip, and it placed them each on separate channels. The audio strip went on channel one, and the video strip went on channel two. And you'll notice if you look to the right of the file, your, or the file path, that it has this frame number, and it matches the frame number of the audio strip. And matching frame numbers makes it so that our audio and our video stay in sync. And you'll notice if you look over here at the frame rate that Blender auto-detected the, uh, the frame rate of the video the best that it could. And it set it to a custom frame rate of 29.92 frames per second. And it did that by simply just making it so that these two uh, numbers are equal. Now, we want to avoid importing files that are variable frame rate because even though this may stay in sync with this custom setting, if I start to bring in other 30 frame per second video, suddenly we're going to notice that the other video that we bring in is going to fall out of sync because it's going to be set to this custom frame rate. We always want to use the constant frame rate settings that we see here. So what do we do if we have an issue of a variable frame rate? 
we use a free transcoder like Handbrake, which you can get at handbrake.fr. And it's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And this transcoder simplifies the whole process of converting to a constant frame rate. In fact, you can even convert to a different frame rate if you like. And it has a whole bunch of other features. It's a really easy to use program and I highly recommend it. So if you have a variable frame rate uh, for your source video, uh, download the Handbrake program and uh, transcode that video to be a constant frame rate and you won't have this problem anymore of having a custom frame rate. It will make it much more pleasurable. I'm gonna select both of these and delete them. And I'm gonna bring in a typical uh, 24 frame per second constant frame rate video. This is uh, Elephant Stream, which is a Blender, uh, a Blender Foundation project that was done many years ago. And you'll notice that it is set to a frame rate of 24, which is exactly what we like. And we have these two frame numbers matching that means that this is going to be a pleasure to edit. But let me show you something that I commonly encounter, and you probably will too, and that is with this video, Tears of Steel, which is another Blender Foundation project, it has an extra frame on the audio strip, even though the frame rate is 24 frames per second. So it turns out that on occasions, when videos are being rendered by different uh, encoders, they will sometimes add frames that are blank to the ends of the video files. I don't know why. This seems to be just a, uh, a weird thing that happens with some encoders. So we can fix this very quickly by selecting the audio strip and going over to the properties on the right, there's a section called time. If I expand this section, we have a hold offset start and a hold offset end. Now what we wanna do is we wanna remove this last frame so that these two numbers are equal. So I'm going to go to the hold offset end and I'm going to click this little arrow to the right to add a frame. And what it did is it chopped off that last frame and now we're matching. Now you don't have to do this. I mean, it's not gonna fall out of sync if it has an extra frame at the end, but let's uh, assume that we're going to add videos after this maybe. Maybe we'll drop a video after this. And what happens if we have uh, an extra frame on the audio, it's gonna push it so that the uh, there's a space between uh, the, the video that we import afterwards. So this is just going to make sure let me actually show you guys. I'm gonna hit my home key while I have my uh, mouse cursor over the sequencer to zoom out. And I'm gonna use my shift and hold my, or put my push my B button down and draw a zoom box around the end over here. And we can see that these end at the exact same spot. But if I take away um, this one that I put here and, and return that extra blank frame, you'll notice that it now is sticking out slightly past the playhead that we have right here. So that's just the quickest way to make these two numbers identical. And also if we want to add a second video file after, it makes it so that it is exactly after. Instead of, let's delete this. Let me show you what happens if I, if I don't make that adjustment. So I'm going to go to the audio strip again. I'm going to add this extra frame and I'm going to add this video and look what happened. It, it caused it to put the audio strip above and it did that because it saw that these two, that there, that these two were not lined up. So it, it needed to go with wherever the playhead was. So it pulled the audio in um, and put it above. It's just messy. So um, it's always a good idea to make sure that those two numbers are even. So uh, I think that's, those are the things you really have to be um, prepared for uh, as you're starting a new project. Make sure that you're using constant frame rates that are standard, like the ones that are listed here. And if they're not, use the Handbrake program to try to convert them to a constant frame rate. And always uh, adjust these strips so that 
they have the same number of frames listed and it will just make it much more pleasurable when you're adding uh, more uh, video to your project. So that's all I want to talk about today. I'll see you guys in the next video.